Hey guys, it's DC here and today we're going over the top 20 tools for offensive security in 2020. So I've put together this list of tools with a description on each uh, for a whole bunch of tools that I've used and that other people have told me to use uh, and then sort of put them all together in a list and made this list. So it's, it's going to be a pretty long video, there's, um, there's 20 items here, so let's get started. The first tool is Nmap, and Nmap, if you don't know, is a tool that you use for scanning networks and ports and you know basic network scanning tool. It's pretty much required in every type of offensive security operation for gathering information. Once you've got that information, you can then move on to attack targets that have open ports or uh, basically do whatever you want from there with other tools. Nmap is number one basically because of that, just because it is one of the most used tools um, that I would use and that other people definitely use as well. You can also write scripts into Nmap to automate uh, different types of attacks or scans, um, which is also quite useful. The next one on the list is Metasploit. Now, Metasploit is mostly known as a exploit tool. It's a part of a security project which provides information about security vulnerabilities. It then aids a pen test from there and you'll definitely have to use Metasploit if you're doing an OSCP. So it's definitely worth knowing how to use it and it comes uh, loaded standard with Kali Linux. The next one up on the list is Burp Suite and I'm sure Stock will be very happy to hear that I've put this in my list. If you're into a web application security and maybe doing bug bounties, uh, Burp Suite is going to be probably your number one tool. There's two different versions, the community and professional, and I definitely recommend using the professional one even though it comes with a pretty expensive license fee. Uh, it's well worth having uh, if you're professional about your bug bounties. It's made with Java, and um, but you can write all sorts of different scripts in there as well, just like Nmap uh, to automate a pen test or a bug bounty. It's got a nice graphical interface as well, which helps things, which sort of helps you to understand what's going on and what each task is, is doing. The next one up on the list is Mimikatz, and it's a pretty cool tool uh, written in C, I believe. This tool is sort of used in post-exploit stage, um, which makes it a pretty useful one to have sort of down the, the line a little bit. It's, it's all sort of directed at uh, AD or Active Directory and um, exploiting targets through those sort of scopes, if that makes sense. Which also leads me onto my next one, Powersploit. Now, Powersploit is basically just PowerShell with exploits written in. It, um, it's usually used as an aiding tool for pen testers on uh, Azure or uh, any environment that's using PowerShell. You can load heaps of different scripts into this tool and if you're pen testing a Windows environment, this is one you definitely want to keep an eye out for because it's going to help you so much. The next one is Radar 2. Now, Radar is all about malware analysis and basically you're using it to reverse a program or to read into what it's actually doing. It comes with a bit of a learning curve, to be honest. Um, well, it did for me at least when I first started using it, um, but there's a whole bunch of tutorials out there on uh, YouTube and Udemy courses that you can do to learn about Radar. Another great reverse engineering tool is Ghidra, and Ghidra is that cool dragon logo one that you probably see around a fair bit. It's an open source project that's maintained these days by the NSA, and it basically gives you the uh, access, or lack of a better word, to um, analyze different file formats. You can use it on Windows, Linux, Mac, pretty much anything. Uh, this also runs primarily with Java, but you can write scripts in there which use pretty much anything that you like. There's um, heaps of really good training documentation on the Ghidra or NSA website, which will help you to learn how to use this tool uh, even better. And I, even I don't know how to use it fully to its full extent, I haven't used it that much. But um, like I said, you can throw in uh, different plugins from Python or Java or, or whatever you really want into that and run those exploits. Uh, down the line. The next one on the list is SE Toolkit, which is Social Engineering Toolkit. This one is all about the, uh, I guess, art 
of hacking humans, which um, is definitely a way of hacking different systems. The end goal of using this application is to gain sensitive information from those users by using this tool to essentially fish them. Next up on the list is Recon NG. Now this one's all about OSINT or open source intelligence uh, from different targets. If you're doing any sort of OSINT investigation on a, a particular target, this tool is probably the number one um, that I would use to obtain that information. It's written in Python, which makes me happy because I love Python. And um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different modules and features that you can download on top to run inside. Next up, we have Multigo, which I didn't know this one, but this one was recommended to me by another guy. And um, he's written down here, it is another OSINT tool um, more focused on data mining and it renders direct graphs for link analysis. Uh, he said also the tool is used in online investigations for finding relationships between pieces of information from various sources located on the internet. So basically it's going to data mine a particular target and then sort of bring them all together in a nice pretty graph for you. I'll, um, I'll have to start using this program a little bit and sort of find out how it all works but it sounds pretty cool. Next up we have Sublistar with a 3 instead of an E. Uh, this one is also recommended to me. The guy who recommended this said, when performing web reconnaissance, one of the required steps is finding out the web application subdomains. In order to automate that, you can simply use a great tool called Sublister. This project is written in Python and it enumerates the website subdomains using many search engines, including Google, Bing, Baidu, and other searches. So yeah, pretty cool tool. Sounds very similar to uh, Multigo, but um, yeah, it's always good to have more information than not enough. The next one on the list is DirSearch, and as the name suggests, it searches directories of websites. Um, basically, once it searches, it then finds the path of that particular target and then lists out uh, those different paths. So if you want to attack a particular path of a website, you would search it first with DirSearch and then go on from there to attack that particular target. That one leads me on to the next one, which is OpenVAS or OpenVAS. And this is a um, weakness, I guess, or gap analysis tool that once you've searched a directory, you then use this program to uh, find out what weaknesses are on that particular target. Once it's listed out all those vulnerabilities, you can then find out uh, sort of exactly what's going on there and then pinpoint those targets directly. Now, taking a step back, to, I guess, the networking layer a little bit more, we're gonna to go to Wireshark. Now, Wireshark is pretty well known as a, a pen testing tool, as well as just a network pack and an packet analyst tool. If you need to inspect any packets or what sort of traffic is going up and down from your network or um, from different machines out or in or whichever direction, you can use Wireshark to find out what exactly is going on. It gives you like a deep dive feature into each packet as well. And it's quite commonly used in CTFs and definitely worth learning uh, if you're going into network security or even systems administration. Next up, we have Zap and we're going back to the web layer here, and this is all about sort of scanning websites. Just like OpenVAS, it then lists out which vulnerabilities are listed on that website, and you use that to then pen test further on that particular website. Back when I did my OSCP, I had to use this uh, program to find out some vulnerabilities on a website to pen test further. I don't know if the test has changed since then, it probably has, um, but yeah, it's definitely worth learning. Next up, we have John the Ripper. Uh, now this one is an open source project by a guy called Open Wall, or a group called Open Wall. And it's basically a password cracker. You can run it on different operating systems and just like Hashcat, it sort of cracks passwords. Next up, we have Dradus. Now Dradus is all sort of after you finish the pen test and you've got all of these vulnerabilities listed and you need something to help you write a report, this is where Dratus comes in. So Dratus is a reporting and collaboration framework for security professionals um, that runs cross-platform. And you can integrate it with other software as well, which makes it super useful for writing really good reports. Um, if you want to improve your writing skill, that's a different thing, but this will help you generate a report. 
Going back to some malware analysis, we have volatility, which is uh, pretty widely used for a digital investigation or forensics type work. It essentially scans or analyzes dumped memory um, after it executes malware to obtain numbers of artifacts, including uh, like network information. It can also scan things like the running APIs, um, different webhooks, I guess still on the API type thing, and uh, you can load in different kernels from uh, different bash commands as well, which makes it really useful to use. The next one is autopsy, and uh, autopsy is again more on the digital forensics side of things. Now, I don't have too much experience in digital forensics, so I didn't know this one, so I had to ask a guy I know, and he basically said, uh, digital forensics computers need to be equipped with many uh, digital forensics tools. One of the most used tools in digital forensics is for sure Autopsy. It is a graphical interface project based on this sleuth kit to help forensics experts investigate volumes and file systems. So yeah, it, it's basically a forensics tool for different systems that you gather information on. The next one on the list is Bloodhound and this is the last one. And I didn't know much about this one either, so I've got a description here from another friend. He said, this tool is a one-page application that uses graph theory to draw the relationship within Active Directory environments. So it's, it's essentially drawing graphs on how AD is communicating through a Windows network and um, who's gonna get what role and etc. So that's, that's a pretty useful tool, I guess. Um, if you want to pen test a Windows environment, which is probably, I'd be willing to say, at least 80% of uh, enterprise environments out there that you're going to be pen testing, especially at the beginning. So yeah, that's my list of 20 different offensive security tools for 2020, the top 20. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other suggestions for tools that people should be using um, for offensive security, please drop them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a like, comment if you have any questions or suggestions. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.